Hello friends. So I'm going to start reading the Old Testament and the New Testament, um, starting at the beginning of each. In this session, we're going to start with Genesis. And what's going to be different about readings I've done before is I will include some notes that I have taken while I've been studying. So I hope they're helpful for you. Maybe they're things that you already know, but they're things that I've learned and I wanted to share. So one of the things I learned is that Genesis is broken up into different sections. And in the first 11 chapters, the focus is on God and humanity. And it's broken up into the creation, Adam and Eve, including the sin and the fall, Adam and Eve's children, where the world becomes violent, the flood, where Noah's family is the only one to survive, and then the Tower of Babel, where people of earth come together, but God separates them into new nations with new languages. So we're going to start in Genesis chapter 1 with the creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formed empty and darkness covered the surface of the watery depths and the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the water. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. God saw the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. There was evening and there was a morning, one day. Then God said, let there be an expanse between the water, separating water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse sky. Evening came in the morning, the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the gathering of the water he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and fruit trees on the earth, bearing fruit with its seed in it according to their kinds. And it was so. The earth produced vegetation, seed bearing plants according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with the seeds and according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Evening came, then morning, the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. They will serve as signs for seasons and for days and for years. They will be lights in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth. And it was so, God made two great lights, the greater light to rule over the day and the lesser light to rule over the night, as well as the stars. God placed them in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth, to rule the night and the day, to separate the light from darkness, and God saw that it was good. Evening came, and then the morning, the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water swarm with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created large sea creatures and every living creature that moves and swarms in the water according to their kinds. He also created every winged creature according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. God blessed them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and then morning, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creatures that crawl, and the wildlife of the earth according to their kinds, and it was so. So God made the wildlife of the earth according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground according to their kinds, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God made man in his own image, he created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. God also said, 
Look, I have given you every seed bearing plant on the surface of the entire earth and every tree whose fruit contains seed. This will be food for you, for all the wildlife of the earth, for every bird of the sky, and for every creature that crawls in the earth, everything having the breath of life in it. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw that all he had made, and it was very good indeed. Evening came, and then morning, the sixth day. So let me stop here for just a moment. When I was a child, I was in school. I had learned a little, a little bit about science. And I had questions about this, about the six days. And what my pastor told me at the time is, the six days and then the seventh day of rest. You take that how your heart tells you to take it. If it's six literal days, or if it's six days spread throughout time. Because we don't know nor understand God's timeline. So those six days may not necessarily have been six days of 24 hours as we know them now. However God made things happen, we know that God created the earth and everything on it. And God created heaven. What we don't know is how he did it how long it took him. We have what the Bible tells us is six days. Maybe that's a literal six days of 24 hours each. Maybe it's more, maybe it's less. But either way, we are told the story of creation and it's one that I truly believe. And that answers a lot of questions that people have about faith, about God, knowing that how God works is ultimately outside of our understanding. So, Chapter two, so the heavens and earth and everything in them were completed. On the seventh day, God had completed his work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy for on it he rested from all his work of creation. Man and woman in the garden. These are the records of the heaven and earth concerning their creation at the time that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. No shrub of the field had yet grown on the land, and no plant of the field had yet sprouted. For the Lord God had not made it rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground. But mist would come up from the earth and water all of the ground. Then the Lord formed man out of the dust from the ground, and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had formed. The Lord caused, the Lord God caused to grow out of the ground every tree pleasing in appearance and good for food, including the tree of life in the middle of the garden, as well as the tree of good and evil of knowledge. A river went out from Eden to water the garden. From there it divided and became the source of four rivers. The name of the first is Pishon, which flows through the entire land of Havah, where there is gold gold from the land that is pure. Bedlam and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is Gion, which flows through the entire land of Cush. The name of the river there is the river Tigris, which runs east out of Asira. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and placed him in the garden of Eden to work it and watch over it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree of the garden but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For on the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper corresponding to him. The Lord God formed out of the ground every wild animal and every bird of the sky and brought it each out to the man to see what he will call it. And whatever the man called the living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock to the birds of the sky and to then every wild animal, but for the man, no helper was found corresponding to him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to come over the man, and he slept. God took one of his ribs and closed the flesh at that place. Then the Lord God made the rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man, and the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This one, will be called woman, for she was taken from man. 
This is why a man leaves his father and mother and bonds with his wife, and they become one flesh. Both the man and his wife were naked, yet felt no shame. 